Hey guys and welcome back to the FE exam review series where I cover the most common FE problems that you need to know to pass your FE exam. In today's video we'll be covering a thermodynamics section problem specifically under part C laws of thermodynamics. Now let's dive in. Oh yeah, everybody now. Now before we get started, so I have an announcement for those of you guys who are taking FE Mechanical. So we are about to launch part of the Mechanical Afternoon course. So if you are interested, go ahead and let us know in the comment section below, or you can sign up in this link here and we'll send you an email once we launch the course. A steam enters a nozzle at a steady state with a pressure of 400 kilopascal, a temperature of 325 and a velocity of 10. The steam exits the nozzle at a pressure of 200 and a temperature of 250, assume no heat transfer and we want to determine the velocity at the outlet of the nozzle. Okay guys, so the first thing you need to do is go to the reference manual and find the equation. So you already have the equation under thermodynamics section for a nozzle, okay? And we are assuming that we have no heat transfer, which is very important. No work is being done. There's no change in potential energy and we have a steady state, okay? So you already have the equation on the reference manual. Now, once you're gonna grab that equation, you're gonna notice that we don't have the inlet and the exit enthalpy okay so you're gonna have to find that first and to determine that you're gonna have to use the superheated tables now why do are we using superheated tables well because we have a steam here okay and i talked about this in the previous problem that we posted if you haven't watched it yet make sure that you do because we covered a lot of good concepts there okay guys so with that and also one more thing i forgot to mention is the units the units in this problem is actually very tricky so watch out for the units and make sure that your units cancel and you actually get meters per second at the end, okay? So why don't you guys pause this problem, go ahead and try it. And again, make sure that you guys are always solving these problems. Make sure that you are not looking at the solution and trying them by yourself on your own because it's really going to help you guys grasp the concepts and also re remember it for your FE exam, okay? So go ahead and pause it and I will see you guys in a little bit. Now, if you guys find this problem helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps the channel out immensely. And also make sure that you guys download this cheat sheet here that has very important equations and concepts that you need to know for your FE exam. Okay guys, so to solve for this problem, the first thing we're gonna do is go to the reference manual and take a look at the equation. So here we have the energy balance equation for when we have a steady flow systems, okay? And we can use is, this equation for nozzles, pumps, compressors, and so on. Now, the problem that we have is that we're assuming there's no heat transfer, so that means this term goes to zero. There's no work being done, so this term also goes to zero. And then also we have no change in elevation or potential energy, so that means this term and this term, go, they go to zero, right? So this equation here simplifies to this equation, which is, this is the equation that we're going to use, and this equation we use it when we have nozzles and diffusers and when the, all these assumptions apply, okay? So just remember that. Now let's go ahead and write the equation down. Now we're trying to find the velocity at the exit or at the outlet of the nozzle. So let's go ahead and rearrange this equation so that we can solve for VE. So we can have VE squared over two is gonna be equal to the enthalpy at the inlet. Then we're gonna do minus the enthalpy at the exit. So we're just gonna take this term to the other side. So it's gonna become negative. And then we're gonna have plus V velocity at the inlet squared over two. Now, looking at this equation, we have the inlet velocity, which was giving us 10 meters per second, but we don't have the inlet and the exit enthalpies. So we're gonna have to go to the reference manual and to take a look at the superheated tables, okay? Now, the reason why we're looking at the superheated tables is because we have a superheated vapor or steam, okay? Now, at the inlet, we were giving a pressure of 400 kilopascal, so 400 is the same thing as 0 0.4 megapascal, so we just divide by 1,000, okay? And then we were also giving the inlet temperature of 325 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be between these two numbers. Now, we don't really need to interpolate here, guys, because 325, it's exactly between 300 and 350. So we can just take the average of these two numbers. So 
this is where we have the enthalpy h okay so we're going to take the average of these two numbers so we're going to do 3066.8 plus 3170.1 and we're going to divide it by two and that's going to give us the enthalpy at the inlet at the 325 degrees celsius now to determine the enthalpy at the exit we were giving a pressure of 200 kilopascal right so the pressure at the outlet or at the exit is 200 kilopascal which is the same thing as the open 2 megapascal so we just divide by a thousand and then the temperature at the exit is giving as 250 so the enthalpy at the exit is going to be 2971 by the way, guys, if you want more FE mechanical problems, make sure to comment below FE mechanical. Okay, now let's go ahead and plug in the numbers into this equation. So the enthalpy at the inlet is going to be 3118.45. So remember, guys, we took the average, okay, because 325 was between 300 and 350 degrees Celsius. So we took the average here. Okay, then we're going to have minus the enthalpy at the exit, which is 2,971 kilojoules per kilogram. And then here, what I'm going to do is leave a little bit of space for unit conversion, which I'm going to go over in a little bit. Then we're going to do plus the velocity. So the velocity is 10 meters per second squared. Okay, and then we're going to divide it by two. Now let's go over the units. So here we have meters per second squared right so that's the same thing as meters squared per second squared and here we have kilojoules per kilogram now we can't really add these numbers because they need to have the same units every term in this equation needs to have the same units okay now here's something to remember guys is that joules per kilogram is actually the same thing as meters squared per second squared okay let's go over that together so what is joules? Joules is the same thing as Newton's meters, right? And then we have here per kilogram, okay? Now, if we simplify this more, what is Newton? Newton is mass times acceleration, so that's kilograms, meters per second squared, right? So that's the unit of mass and then acceleration. And then we, so that's for the Newton, and then we're gonna multiply this by meters, and then we're gonna divide it by kilograms, okay? So now, note guys here how the kilograms is going to cancel with this kilograms, and then we're going to be left with meters squared per second squared, okay? Now, here's something to keep in mind is that the joules per kilogram, that's equal to meters per second squared, okay? But here we have kilojoules per kilogram. So what we're going to need to do here is multiply this by a thousand, okay? So that we can get joules per kilogram, which is the same thing as meters squared per second squared, okay? Now, if you guys plug in these numbers in your calculator, you're going to get 147,000 500 meters squared per second squared. Now, to find the velocity at the exit or the outlet velocity, we're going to take the square root because we want to get rid of this square here. So we're going to take the square root of the other side of the equation. And then we're going to multiply this number here by 2 because here we have 2, right? So we're going to do 2 times 147,500 meters squared per second squared, okay? And now if you guys plug this in in your calculator, you're going to get 543. And note, guys, here that the square here cancels with the, the, the square root, right? So we're just going to be left with meters per second, which is the unit that we want, right? That's the unit for velocity. So now if we take a look at the multiple choice, the answer is going to be D. Now, just something I would like to clarify, guys, here is that I mentioned earlier that this square here cancels with the square root. And so the reason that is, is because the square root is the same thing as half, right? Raising something to the power of half. And so here, if we do two times half, it cancels, right? So the square here in the meters and the seconds, they both cancel because they are raised to the half, okay? So it's just something I wanted to clarify here, just in case if you guys missed it. Now, Make sure that you guys, if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you guys don't miss out on any future videos. The next FE problem that we're going to post is going to be on heat transfer, so you guys don't want to miss it.
Now, if you are currently studying for your FE exam and you are looking for some good study resources that will help you pass your FE exam faster, make sure to check out our courses at jennyprep.com. Our courses have helped hundreds of students pass the FE exam. And also make sure that you guys check out this playlist here that has over 100 FE problems that will help you with your FE preparation. Now, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great productive week and I will see you guys on the next video. I love you. Oh, yeah.